All right, it's time for the quick speed shop. Bam, it's more boogie van, interior action. I got less than 24 hours. I'm leaving for power tour. I got to get this thing done, do some more stuff. So another van video. Let's finish up this interior, put some tunes in it, and maybe a CB radio and whatever else I got figured out for. So here we go. Let's start, bam, right now. So I got to brush up on my CB logo. Let's try it out. Yeah, breaker, breaker. This is the rolling living room. I'm heading down 81. I'm looking for a choking puke. I need some groceries down my neck and a little bit of go go juice for my tank. Come back. That ought to work. Hey guys, welcome back to the Quick Speed Shop. It's another boogie van video. Check it out. Look at the shag. Oh my goodness, that is some green shag right there. Look at it. It's glorious. I can feel it. Anyways, one week to go to Hot Rod Power Tour for me. And. Still got a long ways to go here. I am uh, think I've underestimated my time frame, and I'm in a little bit of a panic. Last time when we put the shag in, I talked about these benches used face like this is how they're meant to be. But I'm going to run them up the whole length of that wall like a limousine, and then it'll give me a really nice bed space to sleep on, almost a seven-foot bed, but still give me lots of access through the van this way. So first thing we're going to do is pull these out of here. I've got some more... Uh, padding for this floor. It's stick on uh, closed cell foam for going under carpets. I'm gonna go and we'll stick down at least this side so we can work on that. Okay, jumped ahead just a little bit. I got half the floor done. This is the stuff I'm using. It's closed cell foam. It's a uh, silliness. It's the same stuff I use as the uh, the rubberized sound deadening, but it's like I don't know eighth inch thick. It's closed cell foam. Just peel it off and stick it. It's pretty. Uh, pretty delicate. You see these little pot marks. I had some air bubbles I couldn't get out and I just poked it and let the air out, but it's, uh, I'm not going to be able to slide them benches in. It'll just tear this stuff up. So what I'm going to do is coat the whole floor of this stuff. Then I'm going to get out my carpet first and put down my carpet, which would probably make sense, I guess, for the benches have the carpet down first anyways. Um, I'm going to use indoor outdoor, I'm going to use artificial turf. It's thick green artificial turf. It's a darker green than the walls. But it, for what I'm going to use this for, like the floor, I want to be durable and not, if I use this carpet for the floor, immediately it would get ruined. It would get worn, it would get ripped, it would get stained, it would just wreck it. So this, this outdoor turf is really, it's plastic, so it's really durable. I can uh, essentially clean it and I can vacuum it out real easy and it won't wear out. I can put junk in here and it won't hurt it. Okay, I got all the padding done in the van here. And uh, stuff is super delicate, like I said. So uh, that's, I definitely want to put the carpet in before I do that, or the uh, turf, I should say. But she's all psh, psh, padded up nice. And I got the turf up here. I went down to my stash of turf. I found a piece over here. It, uh, I've had some mice get into a little bit of it, and I found a piece that didn't have any mouse action. So I uh, had it upside down here. I'll show you the back side. It's rubberized on the back. It had some dirt because I had it folded up the side out. Um, I washed it with soap and water really good. Now I just got it out here drying. Um, it's mostly dry. It's all plastic, so it dries off pretty fast. But this is a little bit darker green to go with the darker green on the seats. And this will be real durable. Like I said, it's got rubber in here. And this stuff, you know, is plastic, so it won't get dirty, you know, anywhere near like carpet wood. So uh, this will be the surface. Lay it in here, trim it all around. I'm going to do it all in one shot. It's a uh, five foot or a little... Oh, five and a half foot by like 10 foot and do it all in one shot in here. I'm going to cut out for my storage container that'll uh, match and then a hole for the table. But I'm going to bring the carpet out here. I'm going to wrap around, screw it into the metal down here or, or lay it under this. Well, that's not even screwed down, is it? Oh, just laying there. So uh, take that out for a second. Aha! Um, wrap it down into here. And so it'll be continuous down there. And it'll go right edge to edge. And then we'll get the uh, seats, try to get them going. Hey, it's a little farther in the afternoon. The carpet is dry. It really doesn't really smell like mouse or anything anymore. So I think we're good. And I'm just getting it laid in here. I've trimmed it to this side first and I'm working my way over. Let's take a look up here. And I'm using self tappers to hold it to the floor. I'm just kind of trying to work it, work it out tight, get the wrinkles out. 
it's going to float. I think the benches will hold down the middle of it. And then I'll, then I'll tie this side down and just kind of let it float in the middle. I've already got my hole cut for my table and that's screwed in locating it. I cut the uh, storage container out and I'm going to put another piece of carpet on that. The main reason was that's right where the bad, the bad mouse part was there. And it still smelled just a little bit like mouse, so I cut it out and I got a different piece of carpet I'll screw or uh, glue onto there. So I'll get rid of that mouse smell altogether. And this is long on this side. I'm just got to work it and trim it. I've got it zip screwed down along there. I got to trim around the fuel door and lay that in. And then at last, we'll cut it in the back. But it's looking really mint. I like the dark green to the light green. This will this will track real nice. This it won't get real dirty, and uh, it'll be it'll wear really good. This is artificial turf for you know playing sports on, so it should last a really long time. It's backed with like rubber here, with holes that let it breathe for mo for uh, drainage, but it lets us breathe here. So it's gonna be it's gonna be good contrast, I think, for the carpet. Stuff trims pretty easy with a carpet knife. Uh, maybe I want to be out here. And it's already uh, real reasonable to walk on. I'm just going to pull that tight. I want to kind of cut it. I'm trying to cut it where it's going to dip down in here. There we go. It's gonna work it. Oh, there we go. Nice. Look at that. Nice. Nice. I'm gonna leave the rear for now. I'm gonna trim this off here under the under the rubber. Stuff really trims good from the back. It's hard to trim it from the front. Okay, let's get the first bench installed here now. Nothing needs to happen with the first one. It's just going to go right in because it it doesn't uh, impact the action. But I got to remove this little. Uh, hold on one second. I got to remove this. Easy. going to butt right up to the there and leave room let's see let me think about this this is going to go as far as I can go right there against the back wall nice let me try it out oh yeah perfect hi here I am chilling. Over here, I got to trim the bottom of the other one um, because I'm sliding it back that way. I got to trim over the wheel well, take some out with a saber saw real fast. Oh shoot, before I do that, down here in this one, I want to cut a hole in this plywood on the front of this for under seat storage. I got to take it back out. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut a big oval in the front of this so that way I can jam stuff under the seat. Um, it'll hold it in there, but I'll be able to store things. Yeah, I better do that. All right, bam, benches pretty much installed. They're just sitting in here, but they're hooked together now. Uh, I gotta make some L brackets to screw them into the wall. I took and I mounted them together with a piece of one of my four inch strips I had left over of plywood, and then I just covered it with extra carpet, little carpet pieces. So the wall like runs down onto the back of the benches. And then I'm just gonna put a couple of L brackets from here to here, plywood to plywood to hold them. Um, I just remember to tell you, I don't need to cut holes in the front of these for storage because when I slide the the cushions out for the bed, you can get into the top of these for storage. So I'll have two big storage containers here. I can put the uh, the table leg and stuff in there, and uh, you know, travel and put my all my uh, bedding and stuff in there under the benches out of the way. But it looks mint, mint. I'm just oh. Check out this little detail. I need a three inch strip between the two, so I did that and I added some carpet. And then uh, here, um, I'm gonna put some kind of shelf and I have some banisters. I think I might put a shelf, I was gonna hinge it, but I might make a permanent shelf that's like a, f I don't know, foot wide or whatever. Come along here and then come up off the floor with a banister. 
then the shelf and a banister up to the ceiling to get some banister action in it because you need that in your 70s van but boom this is looking mint i just gotta it's getting late i gotta break down here i wanted to get further but i didn't i gotta cover that still we have the plywood up for the ceiling it's going to be my command center. The wires are all every which way, but I got two speaker holes over my head. I'm not going to have time to do this tonight, but that's going to be carpeted as well. But to the two, four speaker or the speakers, the CB and some switches are going to be in the center. And then uh, the radio is going to go. I got to put the radio somewhere. I'm not sure exactly where that's going to be. Probably back here. Maybe I'm not sure, but this is awesome. I'm going to drive with these down like this because it mushes a line in the carpet and I don't want to permanently mush the carpet, but for chilling, look at all the uh, space we got here. Okay, it's a couple days later. I'm out here working. I got the speakers put in. Uh, Kenwood 5-inch diameter speakers with tweeters in the center. There's going to be four of them all together. It's like allergy season for me. I got allergies, so my voice might be a little weird, but I'm taking the medicine, so... I'm managing. I'm in here working on a headliner as well. Um, I just bought a radio. I went to get at the auto parts store. I went to get a antenna extension to extend the antenna up to here. And I just happened to find this cheap junk radio at, uh, I think it was AutoZone, for like 50 bucks. And <clears throat> I'm going to throw it in because it's the only radio I got right now. Where is it right here? It's like Boss. Look at that Boss Audio Systems. And it's, uh, like I said, it was like 50 bucks or something. I didn't realize radios are so small now, an OCD player and stuff. Look how small that is. It's crazy. Anyways, I just impulse bought it because I had an older uh, CD radio I was going to put in. And uh, down in the basement it was used, and I haven't seen it in a while. So I was like, you know what, for 50 bucks I'll just buy this one. And it's got like Bluetooth and MP3 action, so... In theory, I could hook my phone up to it and make phone calls on it and whatever, I guess. So I can always upgrade it later to something that's not 50 bucks, but should work. What I'm doing is making a box for it. I've got like the standard, if you ever put a radio in anything, it's like the standard cut the rectangle in the dash bracket. <clears throat> so I'm making a sheet metal box that's going to mount up to the top there. And I've just kind of broke it up. Oh, I forgot to show you. Check out this other awesome thing I got. I found that I had Craig 8 track. This is actually an AM FM stereo with an 8 track player. And I don't know if it works. I thought about trying to hook this up, and that would be super cool. But it's a Craig 8 track stereo, AM FM stereo. How cool is that? Volume, treble, and bass. Oop, that's kind of hung up there. Uh, Fast forward, MPX, whatever. All right, so next night, I got the carpet on the headliner. I got the radio box painted flat black. I've got the wires hanging in there. Um, these wires here for the CB, which is going in. And I'm about ready to slide the radio in. I had to get a cable extension and extend the cable from the back of the factory radio up and through the A pillar there. So I got the dash half tore apart. But the box is really crude. It's just crude flat black, but it's going to hold the radio. Look at that headliner. That is awesome with that shag and them speakers. It ought to sound pretty good. i got to find some of my trim, put the trim back on the A-pillar over there. Um, I added a charge port right there. I found it all. I found an auto zone. Got it wired into the fuse panel under the steering column. So now i got some phone charge in action. I never had that. The This wire... I don't know why the cigarette lighter doesn't work. I don't have time to chase it down, so I just put new ports in. And uh, I got my table back out here, my little post table. Goes right here in the pocket. Boom. Like that, little Formica table. So when you swivel the buckets around and set the seats up, you can hang out at the table. I still want to build a, a, a short bench on this wall. I think we're going to do that real fast for the end of the video. But the shag looks fantastic. I just got to bolt these benches down and finish up this action up here. And uh, I got like one day left and I'm heading to Power Tour. It's the next day. It's Saturday. I'm leaving tomorrow for Power Tour. So this is the final thrash for this video. I got the radio here. 
the cheapy AutoZone Bluetooth radio, and we're going to install it in the box. Plug the antenna in. Plug my speaker wires in to the back. You probably can't see what I'm doing, but trust me, it's getting plugged in. Boom. Boom, like that. And in theory, should just be able to jam this right into the metal box. There we go, boom, installed, bam. <clears throat> Allergies. All right, bam, installed. All right, so now, has that got a protective cover on it? Yes, it does. We're gonna, does it? Yeah, it's got one of them films on there. You saw a bubble, I saw a bubble on the screen. I'm like, what is this bubble? But it's one of them protective little sheets of plastic, bam. So all I gotta do is hook the power up to my fuse block. We'll check in a second. What I wanna do next is I wanna install the CB. Now that the radio is up here, man, it's mint. So uh, here it is here. Oh, I gotta make a bracket for it real fast. Shoot, it's a uh, realist, oh, it's a Regency. Check that out, Regency. Here's the back. Um, I checked this with a battery, it does work. This is probably from the 70s or early 80s, I would imagine. So it's probably gonna go right about here so I can see it from the road. I gotta figure out where I'm gonna hang the cord. Ooh, I like that over here. But let me, I gotta make an L bracket, or a U-shaped bracket to go up over the top that will screw into the ceiling. So let me whip one of them out of the sheet metal real fast and then uh, we'll mount this up. This works. I tested it before, we'll mount that right about there. Okay, well, it's many hours later. I saved you all the fabrication because this video would be 1,800 hours long. But I made a shelf for this side. I used a uh, plywood uh, shelf, a veneer plywood shelf. And this molding is actually from the 1930s or 40s out of an old bank that we worked on at work. And it's uh, real, whatever it is, tongue groove molding that I saved. I made that into the edge. We got some banisters here. You always got to have banisters in your 70s van. It's just how it is. So uh, my friend Jordan's wife Victoria made me some curtains out of some black material I had. It's just like felt or whatever. Um, probably at the end of the video or off camera, I'm just going to make some simple curtain rods and put these curtains up so I can have a little privacy if I got to sleep in the van during power tour at all. They're just real simple black I'm just gonna have two rods go across here and the thing will slide to one side when it's done. It's eventually, um, I'm gonna make like bow tie uh, curtains out of like green material that'll be ribbed and stuff like actual curtain. But these are gonna be good for what I need to do here on the trip and the clinch. So the shelf is installed and it's pretty, pretty good. I got a bracket to the wall there and then these banisters are screwed to the floor. So. Nice and sturdy when I'm using the bed. The bed will be over here. I can put, you know, my phone and stuff like that on the shelf. And when you're hanging out in here, you can put, you know, whatever on the shelf, food or cups or stuff like that. On the electronics front, I have this console TV that my friend uh, gave me out of an old conversion van. I'm probably going to ditch that for now. It doesn't, the wood's not the right color and it's just big and intrusive sitting there. So I'm not taking that, but it might be neat to mount that console up eventually. What I did mount up here... 8-track stereo. It's Craig and it is a FM, AM, FM uh, tuner radio 8-track player. I got that mounted here like an auxiliary stereo. So what I'm hoping is to display this at the power tour with the door open. I have my signage here. I got my aluminum sign backer. I have quick speed shop signs here. I have stickers and stuff people can come take at the uh, show. Have the back doors closed, but kind of have this door open so you can see the whole inside of the van. So you'll come up and see, hey, look, an eight track player. That's cool. And I got the CB and all that, but this will be like the display giveaway area here at the power tour. So now let's go up here and we're gonna try the radio. Probably the moment y'all been waiting for, we're gonna try the stereo. I've got the CB mounted. I made a sheet metal tab screwed to the ceiling. I didn't have a good way to hang the, um, the, I didn't have a, I didn't have a good way to hang the receiver and I didn't want it mounted on like a metal 
tab that could jam me in the head if I was moving around here. So I got to brush up on my CB logo. Let's try it out. Yeah, breaker, breaker. This is the rolling living room. I'm heading down 81. I'm looking for a choking puke. I need some groceries down my neck and a little bit of go go juice for my tank. Come back. That ought to work. All right, it should have power. Let's see. Where's the on button on this radio power? Oh no! Why do I not have power on my radio? Let's try the CB. Oh! Why is the radio not working? It's... I didn't have time to install this, but look, I got a PA. And if we go to PA... Okay. Hello, hello, hello. Test, test, test. Hello. Hmm. Do you got to be not on? I wonder if you got to go to something special to be on PA. Shouldn't have to be on. Hello, hello. Hmm. Don't know why. PA. Hello, 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 hello. I hear. Whoa. Hello, hello. I hear it keying up. Well, it's a good thing I didn't waste time hooking that up because it is not very good. It might be the wrong ohm, 80 ohm. I wonder what the ohmage is here. Uh, da, 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 something, something, something. Doesn't see. Well, whatever. I'm not going to worry about that. The big problem is why won't the radio turn on? So let me uh, diagnose that. All right, I figured it out. I had the battery power hooked up, but I didn't hook up the ignition wire because I was running it off the fuse pan off the battery, which is going to shut the power off to the radio every time. But you also need the ignition power hooked up to make the radio work. Oh, there we go. She came alive. Oh. What's with all these colors? Oh no. Why is the antenna not working? Stop. I've learned that your life follows your thoughts. You can't think negative and live positive. If you get your mind going in the right direction. All right, cool. Uh oh. Well, I can't play music because of YouTube. That's beginning Metallica something. Let me play around with this and... Uh... All right, guys, that's about it for this video, but I can't remember if I showed you. Look at my vinyl. I had the rear window's vinyl wrapped. Where is it? That way. Bam, look at that. So any time you're out and I'm out and about with a van and events, you can find me. So, it's going to be too late for anybody that's watching this video probably to see it on Power Tour at this point, but the van is going. I'm leaving tomorrow. I'm just going to clean this up. I'm as much as I got to do. I put the little rail around the thing. 
Just gonna button up some edges, vacuum this out. I gotta pack some tools, pack some junk, get ready to go. But I figured the stereo out. The interior is as much done as it's gonna be done. This video might come out after power tour. I'm not sure how it's gonna shake out, but I'm gonna try to do daily uploads if it doesn't work out. I didn't do daily uploads. If it didn't, I couldn't get Wi-Fi at the hotel or something. I think I can do it. Depends how it works. But anyways, I'm going to power tour. If I see you there, I see you there. And uh, thanks for watching. This is probably going to be this is probably going to be about the end of van action for a while. The interior is mostly dialed, and I will be working on other stuff. I got my backyard gas station coming up. I've got to get back on the Dodge truck for sure. Paint the cab and get that put together this summer. Um, uh, working on our, uh, well, some of the other street rods, the 40 Mercury might be coming back out. The 37 Ford is definitely coming out. Switch that to 12 volts. A lot of things coming up this summer. So I appreciate everybody watching. I'm going to power tour. Hopefully I make it back and we'll see you. Bam. Again, doing cool stuff here at the quick speed shop.